or very important to working safely at SmartPost. Pallets are built and loaded every day to post offices throughout our network. Make sure you are lifting pallets appropriately by using three simple steps. Let's see how it's done. First, tilt the empty pallet up. Drag the pallet next to you as you move it to its location. Then, lower the pallet to where you're going to use it. In order to work with pallets safely, please keep the following points in mind. Do not move a pallet with packages on it without a pallet jack or forklift under any circumstances. The only time it is appropriate to move a pallet manually is when it is empty. Never throw a pallet. Not only does this put you at risk for a back injury, it could also hurt others. When moving a pallet with a pallet jack, make sure you can see where you are going. If you cannot easily see the floor in front of the pallet, pull the pallet behind you rather than pushing it in front of you. Being aware of your surroundings is important to your safety. Moving packages throughout the FedEx SmartPost network requires a lot of heavy machinery. Every FedEx SmartPost hub has conveyor belts that carry the packages from area to area. While conveyor belts help us all efficiently handle packages, there are safety precautions to consider when working around conveyor belts. First and foremost, only trained personnel are permitted to start and stop the conveyor belts. This will be handled by management or maintenance personnel. You may stop the belt in an emergency. However, you are not permitted to work on the belt under any circumstance. Only authorized maintenance personnel are permitted to service the conveyor or remove or adjust safety guarding. Never touch moving conveyor parts. This could lead to serious injury, including loss of limbs. Make sure all safety guards are in place. If a guard is missing or broken, contact management immediately. Keep away from all pinch points, transition gates, transition plates, and extendable conveyor belts that may cause pinch points. Keep clothing, hair, or body parts away from the conveyor, especially at pinch points where they could get caught in the belt. FedEx Smart Post prohibits walking, sitting, stepping, crawling, and crossing over moving conveyor belts. You are only permitted to cross over conveyor belts at designated crossover areas and only after you press the stop button. Take precaution around moving conveyor belts to avoid injury. Preventing injuries is much better than recovering from injuries. Be aware of your surroundings at all times in order to stay safe. The yards at FedEx Smart Post hubs are very busy places. The constant movement of trailers in the yard requires all Smart Post employees to take appropriate safety precautions. Trailer movements are constantly occurring in the yard. Let's take a few minutes to discuss ways to stay safe while trailers are being moved. The switcher is the person who is responsible for moving trailers on and off the dock doors. He or she may experience blind spots while moving trailers in the yard. You must not assume the switcher can see you. You should never take a chance around any moving trailer and should wait for the trailer to stop moving. Not working safely around moving trailers could be serious or even fatal. From time to time, you may see a package on the ground outside a trailer. It is very important that you never jump from the dock to pick up a package from the ground. Not only can jumping from the dock create a risk of being injured by the trailer, jumping from the dock can also injure your ankles, legs, or other body parts. If you see packages below the trailer, contact your manager. Having a signal when the trailer is in place and ready for unload or load is important. For this reason, it is important to leave the doors closed during the trailer switch. When the trailer is ready, the switcher will sound the horn to let you know a new trailer is on the door and ready to be processed. 
Never enter a trailer until it is unhooked. When a trailer is still hooked to the tractor, jarring can occur. This can cause injury to the person inside the trailer. Make sure you are following proper procedures. This will prevent injuries from occurring because of miscommunication. When you're outside the facility, you can still encounter potential safety risks. Being alert will help keep you out of harm's way. For instance, the hub yard has designated places to walk. Do not walk outside of these crosswalks. In the rush of getting packages processed, you may think it's okay to bend safety rules, but I can assure you that the seconds you may save by cutting corners are not worth the risks of injury. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, requires companies to provide periodic training for workers on several topics. While working at FedEx SmartPost, you'll receive annual training on the following topics. Fire evacuation plans for your facility. Fire extinguishing procedures. Conveyor safety. Lockout, tagout. Electrical safety. Hazard communication and bloodborne pathogens and first aid. After this video, you will receive additional information on conveyor safety, emergency evacuation instructions, bloodborne pathogens, and first aid and hazard communication. In this section of the video, we will go over electrical safety and fire extinguishing techniques. Electrical safety is an important topic of focus for all employees. However, only qualified personnel are permitted to work on electrical sources. FedEx Smart Post hires qualified maintenance personnel to fix all electrical repairs. If there's work that needs to be done on a fuse box, wiring, or other electrical outlets, contact your manager or maintenance personnel. Do not touch electrical equipment. If you encounter a fire at FedEx Smart Post, you must know that no employee is required to fight a fire. Your safety is the most important thing. There is a fire extinguisher no more than 50 feet from any point on the dock. Familiarize yourself with fire extinguisher locations. If you choose to extinguish a fire, use pull, aim, squeeze, sweep, or pass to help guide you. Pull the pin from the fire extinguisher. Aim the spray nozzle or hose nozzle at the fire. Aim low at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to spray the contents. Finally, sweep back and forth as you spray the base of the fire. Remember, a standard fire extinguisher has less than 30 seconds of spray time. If you ever feel you are in danger, leave immediately. Things can be replaced, you cannot. Employees will receive annual training in each of the OSHA required topics, as well as daily safety tips. If you have any questions at any time, please see your manager. It is important that you understand all safety regulations. It is everyone's responsibility to keep safety above all. Remember the following to prepare for a safe working experience at FedEx Smart Post. Be aware of your surroundings. Watch for lights and listen for alerts of moving vehicles or conveyors. By constantly surveying your surroundings, you can avoid potential injuries. Avoid slips, trips, and falls by watching where you are going and keeping a clear work path. You can minimize the potential for slips, trips, and falls by following these simple guidelines. Use proper lifting techniques. Following the simple steps presented in this video will help you prevent back injuries. Follow proper pallet handling techniques when moving pallets. Never manually move a pallet that has packages loaded on it. Use precaution when working around moving conveyor belts and pinch points. Be sure to keep hair and loose clothing away from these areas. No matter how minor, report all injuries to management. Jumping from the dock is strictly prohibited. 
Wait to hear the switcher sound the horn before you open the overhead door. Be sure the overhead door remains closed while new trailers are being put on a door. When walking through the yard, always use the designated crosswalks. Only managers or maintenance are permitted to work with electrical items. Never remove a lockout, tagout device or tamper with safety guards on equipment. As an employee of FedEx SmartPost, it is your responsibility to perform your duties in a safety conscious manner at all times, maintain work habits and attitudes that will protect other employees as well as yourself, observe all applicable hub and office safety rules. Once again, welcome to FedEx SmartPost. We're glad you're on the team. We look forward to a long and safe working relationship with you. Before you can perform the job function of trailer loading, you must have successfully completed FedEx Smart Post's Smart Start Safety Program and watch the Smart Start wearable scanner video. When loading trailers, your role is to care for the packages you load, also known as parcels, as if they were your own. Remember, the package is not a piece of cardboard. The package is the customer. The methods displayed in this video will help you deliver exceptional service to our customers. Customers want packages to be damage-free and on time. Through the Purple Promise, we pledge to make every FedEx experience outstanding. Your role in our network is critical to the success of our organization. To be successful when loading a trailer, you'll need to obtain a wearable scanner following your hub's process. Your dock manager or lead parcel sorter will show you how to obtain the scanner through your hub's equipment checkout process. Also verify there is a load stand, bag stand, and smalls bags located outside the trailer. If they are not available, contact your dock manager or lead parcel sorter. To begin the loading process, unlatch and raise the door of the trailer. If you experience any difficulty in opening the trailer door, notice trailer damage, or find standing water, contact your dock manager to assess the situation. In most cases, you'll be loading a drop frame trailer. A drop frame trailer is divided into three sections, the belly, the nose, and above the decks you'll load the trailer in the same order. When you're looking into the trailer, decks two through six are on the passenger or right side of the rollers. Decks one and seven through 10 are on the driver's or left side of the trailer. The trailer is broken into sections with multiple braces called ribs. In the center of the trailer are gravity fed rollers. The final part of the trailer you'll use is the load netting. Before you begin loading, secure the load netting on the left or driver's side of the trailer near the door. If the trailer does not have a load net, contact your dock manager to locate one. As you move through the trailer, keep safety in mind. Never walk on any part of the rollers or roller structure in a trailer. When you're loading a trailer, you'll be using a HRSA label to help direct you to which trailer the package is to be loaded on. HRSA stands for Human Readable Sort Assist. The label is applied to the package and includes a three-digit destination hub code printed in the upper left-hand corner of the label. Before you begin loading, look at the load charts located outside the trailer for the range of HRSA codes that belong in that trailer. Keep this range of numbers in mind as you load the trailer. The HRSA value will aid you in resolving any misloaded packages discovered by your scanner that belong in another trailer. When loading your trailer, if you come across any open packages, Stop loading and alert your dock manager or lead parcel sorter immediately. To begin loading a trailer, you first need to log into the PALS application on the wearable scanner. Following the processes in the Smart Start wearable scanner video, you will scan every package using PALS in multi-parcel mode to ensure it is being loaded into the correct trailer and is ready to leave the hub. The top of the wearable scanner screen should display multi-parcel mode. If it does not, push the blue button and the number 2 to change the mode. You need to set a package loaded in the trailer as your target package. To set your target package, scan the Delcon barcode on the package. 
Press the blue button and then press the number 5 to tell the scanner that this is the first package you are loading into the trailer. The scanner will ask you to confirm the target parcel two times. You confirm this by pressing the blue button and the number 7. Once you have done this, scan the package Delcon barcode again. You should see Parcel Sort Complete on the screen. Now that you have set your target package, you can pick up the next package on the rollers or in the chute and scan the Delcon barcode to load that package into the trailer. If the package you scanned is supposed to be loaded in the same trailer as your target package, you'll hear a beep and see Parcel Sort Complete on the screen. When you receive confirmation, load the package into the trailer. If the new package is not supposed to be in the same trailer as your target package, the scanner will beep three times and display the problem on the screen. Packages sorted to your trailer that do not belong there are called misloads. The wearable scanner will notify you when a package is not supposed to be in that trailer or if the package is not ready to be loaded. When the wearable scanner beeps three times to identify a package that should not be in that trailer, place that package outside the trailer in your hub's designated spot for misloaded packages. You need to acknowledge on the scanner screen that the error has been corrected before you can scan any additional packages. To acknowledge the error, you press the blue button and the number 8. To prevent misloads, every package must be scanned with the wearable scanner. If you are not sure that a package has been scanned, scan it again. FedEx SmartPost uses both manual and automatic material handling systems. To start loading a trailer, extend and position the equipment flush with the rollers. Your dock manager or lead parcel sorter will instruct you on how to use the equipment. You'll begin loading a trailer in the belly section. Once packages begin to flow onto the rollers, step down into the belly and proceed to deck 6. Take the packages from the rollers and scan each package with the wearable scanner. Load the packages from under the rollers to the trailer wall, wedging the packages tightly without damaging them. Be mindful of your surroundings as you load under the rollers. If possible, load a large, lightweight package in the corner against the rollers. Unloading this package first at the destination hub will provide space for the unloader to stand when unloading the belly. Select heavier packages when possible to be loaded on the floor. Loading lighter packages on the bottom will cause damage to these packages. Utilize smaller packages along the top to fit in the small area directly under the rollers. Turn the packages to find the best fit that allows you to load the maximum number of packages with minimal empty spaces. Your goal is to create a flush, smooth wall. When deck 6 is complete, move to deck 5. Continue to load under the rollers to the trailer wall. Follow this same procedure for decks 4, 3, and 2, filling the space above the wheel wells to the level of the deck. After you finish loading under deck 2, close the deck, then walk safely onto deck 2 and close decks 3 through 6. When the decks are closed, packages should touch the deck without being crushed. Move to the left or driver's side of the trailer and begin loading packages starting with deck 10. Concentrating on loading from the wall to the rollers, wedging packages tight without damaging them. When deck 10 is complete, move to deck 9. Continue to load from the wall to the rollers. Follow the same process for decks 8, 7, and 1, filling the space above the wheel wells to the level of the deck. After you finish loading under deck 1, close the deck, then walk safely onto deck 1 and close decks 7 through 10. When the decks are closed, packages should touch the deck without being crushed. Remember to use safe package handling techniques as outlined in the Smart Start Safety Program. As you load the trailer, small bags and packages will be mixed in with boxes on the rollers. As small packages come to you, scan them with a wearable scanner and place them in a small's bag until it is full. Once full, tie the bag closed and place the new small's bag in the bag stand. Do not load full small's bags into the belly or nose, for these are hard to unload at the next destination. If you are loading the nose, set full small's bags against the trailer walls above decks 3, 4, 7, or 8. 
Smalls bags may be loaded on top of walls above the decks. Once the belly is complete, the next sections you will load in the trailer are the nose and above the decks. You need to make sure you have a load stand available to use when you load packages into the nose and above the decks of the trailer. Before you begin loading the rest of the trailer, there are two key terms you will need to know, walls and shelves. When you load a trailer, you use packages to build walls. A full trailer will be loaded with multiple walls of packages. A package wall is made up of multiple shelves. A shelf is a layer of packages in the wall. The shelves of each wall need to be tight to the sides of the trailer so that the packages do not move. There are five priorities to loading above the decks and in the nose of the trailer. You will see a trailer loader demonstrating each priority. The first priority to trailer loading is to load each shelf level from left to right using wedged packages to keep it tight. As you add shelves to the wall, try to make a T formation similar to a brick wall with the edge of the packages on the shelf below. This will reduce the number of damaged packages since packages share the weight when stacked in a T formation. Look at this picture of a well-built wall and notice all the T formations. This is a negative example. We use the same packages as in our positive scenario. Notice the package's weight caving the sides and crushing the packages below. Always attempt to finish the current shelf with the next available package. If the next available package does not fit into the current shelf, load the package on a new shelf in the same wall. Remember to load from left to right and never start a new wall until your current wall is loaded to the ceiling. This brings us to our second priority, which is to build one wall at a time. As you can see, our trailer loader followed the correct loading technique when the package would not fit on the base shelf. He loaded the package to an alternate shelf on the current wall. Let's take a look at a negative scenario in which the trailer loader begins to build a second wall. The trailer loader has reduced the possibility of filling in the top of the first wall because he is unable to place packages on the original wall. Note the large amount of open space at the top of the wall. Packages could be damaged during transit or cause injury to an unloader at the destination hub if these packages shift. It's your job to raise the roof inside each trailer by loading one wall at a time to the ceiling. All packages and walls should be tight side to side, back to front, and top to bottom to minimize shifting. The third priority of trailer loading is to keep the wall that you are loading smooth and even. You can use the trailer ribs as your guide to build a solid foundation for your wall, as long as it does not leave more than a 6-inch space between the walls. As you build walls in the trailer, fill behind the wall with additional packages to keep the walls from shifting, and to use all the space in the trailer. You should only load the space behind the wall up to the height of the current shelf so you don't restrict the placement of packages on the next shelf. In this negative scenario, you see a trailer loader build a wall that is not smooth and even. As the wall reaches the ceiling, the weight of the packages start to shift forward. This can lead to packages avalanching, causing damage or injury to the package contents and possible injury to you or the person unloading the trailer. To check your work on how well you fill behind the wall, try the push test. This test simply involves pushing on your current wall to see if all space behind it has been utilized. If the wall moves, you need to place additional fill packages behind the wall. If the wall does not move, great job! Continue loading the rest of the shelves on your wall to the ceiling, ensuring all space is filled. You must use a load stand to aid in placing packages toward the ceiling of the trailer. A great trailer loader will load each wall so that the highest shelf touches the ceiling. Crushable packages should also be placed toward the ceiling. Crushable packages are those packages that would be damaged if another package were placed on top of it. An example of a crushable package is a smalls bag. This helps prevent damaging packages. The fourth priority of trailer loading is, if a large package doesn't fit on your current wall, set it aside. You can use it as the base for your next wall. A good base package is around 18 to 24 inches, which is about the distance from your elbow to the tip of your fingers. This package can be loaded at any time while working on a current wall to start the next wall. Finally, the fifth priority is to scan every package with a wearable scanner. 
the wearable scanner will tell you when a package is not supposed to be in that trailer or is not ready to be loaded. This prevents misloads. Following the five priorities of trailer loading allows you to fill the trailer and prevents packages from being damaged. Remember, load from left to right, keeping packages tight. Load one wall at a time. Build smooth and even walls. Load packages behind the walls to fill the trailer and prevent the walls from moving. Large packages that don't fit on your current shelf can be set aside. Use them to start the base of your next wall. Scan every package with a wearable scanner to prevent misloads. When loading trailers, your goal is to build grade A walls to prevent packages from avalanching, causing damage to the package contents, and possible injury to you or the person unloading the trailer. The following tips will help you build a grade A wall. Turning a package may give you more.